to you and your baby, we dedicate this film. Doctors calculate the 40 weeks of pregnancy by measuring from the first day of your last period. In week one, nothing's happening. During week two, you may be coming up on ovulation, but you're not pregnant. By week three, something may have occurred that would lead you to believe that you're pregnant, but you really don't know. It is February 21st. I should be starting my period either the next few days, I think. Um, so I'm gonna take a test on Monday. I'm thinking I could be pregnant. Of course, I'm Googling every weird thing that I get. I'm really tired. I've had this weird sore throat. Um, okay, and then also my underarms smell so bad. <laughs> and I don't know if that's hormones. Like, excited I admitted that. I watched my wife journey through pregnancy to give me my beautiful daughter Gaia. I love her for it. I'm in awe of all women for it. I needed to give something back. I run around, kiss the sky, hug the trees as I go by. I sing a tune to strangers as they look at me and wonder why. These are all the things I do since the moment. You made my dreams come true These are all the things I do I hold your hand tightly in mine As the years go flying by And when the day comes that you go this is all you need to know Everything is what I do If you ever need me to Since you made my dreams come true These are all the things I do thinking it may be a little too early, but we're gonna go ahead and take the test. Oh, you can't see, so it's not pregnant. Oh well, maybe next time. Okay, I haven't looked at it yet. You wanna look at it with mommy? Yeah. Test to see if you have a baby brother or sister. Um, okay. um. <gasps> pregnant! Oh my God. You didn't have a baby brother or sister. Yay! Say baby! Baby! Say pregnant! Baby! Wow, congratulations, pregnant. Emily. I'm so happy for you. And the journey begins. <laughs> He's a snuggle bug, huh? He is. I'm in week eight, which is very exciting, and we got, we went to the doctor um, and saw the first sonogram and saw. It, what's amazing is that it looks huge, but it's like, what, this big or something? First it was like annoying because they made me drink a lot of water to have my bladder full. And so I'm like, oh, so I'm like about to burst. I'm like, okay, I just want, I want to see my baby. I want to see my baby. It was scary um, and it was exciting. And it was scary because we had actually done that sonogram the first time. Um, when I had my miscarriage in June, I was like, please, you know, let this be okay. You know, let this baby, you know, have a heartbeat and let everything be okay. She like put the wand on me and like looking around, I can't really see what's going on. She's like, that's your baby. I'm like, what, what's that? You can kind of see the uterine sec um, and literally just like a little blob. It just looked just like, just not like a child at all. And I was like, <gasps> It's the cutest thing in the whole entire world. Look at it. I was like, I was just so in love with it. I was like, oh And that's God. when the baby it got was... its first nickname. Yeah, we called it Clumpy. 
we actually saw like the little little like heart like trinkles you could say like you know beating and stuff and then she like hit me with the heartbeat and i was like it's tears just, just tears. tears it just was unbelievable you're like oh my god there's the human inside of me hi mom and dad look at they printed hi mom and dad on it that's really fun i didn't notice that till just now she started like taking you know measurements of things she's like hmm then they go and get a doctor and so it's the three of them pointing at the screen and whispering and stuff and she's like okay so it looks as though you have a very large fibroid tumor and i was like i heard tumor and i was like what she's like it's you know it's not a big deal lots of women get it but i thought that you had two uteruses <laughs> I was like, okay, so it's that big. She was like, yeah, it's that big. So um, uh, it was just something for me to take note of. But she said that it happens in women and uh, that the baby looks healthy and everything like that. From then on, it was just, I wanted to be the best me that I possibly could be so that heartbeat could stay as strong as it was. Oh my God, I love heart hearing that. We're gonna be parents and it's something that um... Up to, up to as recently as a few months ago, we thought it wasn't actually physically possible for us. I had cancer. I went through chemotherapy, and after I was done with chemotherapy, um, I was told that I probably was going to be, because I was in menopause from the chemo, and I was probably going to stay in menopause. And then all of a sudden in February, I got my period and they were very cautious with me and saying, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're fertile. And all of a sudden I started not feeling well and I instantly thought I was sick again because it was very similar, like the fatigue and the nausea. And I didn't want to say anything to anybody because I really thought, here we go again, I'm about to do this to everybody again. I thought, well, you know what, let me just go get a pregnancy test and do that because that's the first thing they're going to ask me since I started getting my period. The second I like put them down, they were positive and I just was like, this, now that has to be defective, let me do another one. My pregnancy test, the test that I'm the most happiest that I passed. I wanted him to come home so badly. <laughs> I was like great. sitting like a little like kid on the edge she of the was, sofa, just was. like waiting for him to come. And he came in and I was like, you have to go look in the bathroom. Like, go look what he did in the bathroom. I'm thinking, I don't really understand what we could possibly redecorate in there. And the first thing I see is nothing. So like, nothing has changed. <laughs> and then I look down. <gasps> I mean, just incredible. I, when when somebody tells you something's not possible and you really believe it is and then it happens, it's, it's an amazing feeling. When I met Max and Liz, I knew I would know them forever. And Victoria and Chris, I was moved by how open and available they were. Don't you jump in this bed, Christopher. I just made it. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, my period's not come yet. Cause I know that I wasn't like as good with my birth control, but I've had slips before. So I was like, oh, so you know, no problem. It was like a real faint plus. And I was like, oh, oh no. And so I go to my husband, I'm like, what does this look like to you? And he's like, Vicky, it looks like a plus sign. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. It was a lot of crying on my end just because like I'm such a planner and I've always been a planner. And so when things don't work out in my plans, I freak out first. And he's the leveler, like he like balances me out. He's the earth to my air. And um, he's like, it's okay, we can do it. You know, we can do it. It was just my mental, like getting it, yeah, myself out of the way, I guess. We had actually had a miscarriage and um, that was a very sad time for us. You know, we talked about it and we were like, okay, now we definitely, you know, have it in the plans, but not that soon. Like two months later for me to um, conceive and we were like, Whoa. So, you know, being a planner, I kind of, you know, charted everything and knew what to expect. And um, I had just missed my, you know, monthly cycle. When we tested positive, I kind of did the whole due date thing and it said five weeks pregnant, which was really confusing because I hadn't even been back in the US for five weeks. So he's already like, How uh, weird is that? I'm yeah. five weeks pregnant, <laughs> yeah. but we've only been here for three weeks. Awkward. You know. <laughs> This was our little gummy bear, Nugget, when we decided to name her Little Bitty Nugget. It's very surreal. You know, you can read about it, you hear stories about it, but then when it happens to you, it's just totally different. Anything surprising you? 
I don't feel like myself. So that's like the one consistent thing. Like you're, you're hormonal, you're emotional. You, you know that you're emotional and you can't stop yourself from being emotional even though you know you're being emotional. Getting up to go to the bathroom all the time, which I was really surprised starts very early. Not being able to eat what I want to eat. It's funny that, that I forget a lot of the things I'm allowed to and not allowed to eat. I've been looking them up all over again. The very first time I was ever pregnant, I had this huge aversion to alcohol. This time, it's all I want to do. Kids like the liquor. Yes, they do. Don't worry, she's not drinking, because we all know you shouldn't drink alcohol during pregnancy. Then there are all those other foods you should avoid, like soft cheese, caffeine, sushi, cold cuts, unpasteurized food. I figured we needed to talk to some experts. The simplest way to think about it is anything that is raw, anything that is undercooked, anything that you're unsure of where it's coming from, or where it's being cooked, or how it's being cooked, or anything that is not pasteurized simplest way. Part of being a first mom, you have no idea what's good and what's bad. You just don't know. So you don't want to read a lot because then it freaks you out. And then if you don't read enough, then you're not informed. We have like all this stuff running through our head and like, why can't I have undercooked eggs again? Oh my God, there was deli meat on my sandwich and I don't know what to do and like I have to call the doctor. And... Another thing I learned is that oral health care is very important during pregnancy. I noticed that like even I brush twice a day and I do floss and I even mouthwash and my gums, no matter what I do, will bleed. In. Up to 50% of women will develop gingivitis during pregnancy. That can lead to infection, which can lead to bad pregnancy outcomes. I soon learned that women Women that I met were bumping into question after question about what they could safely use. My face just went <sighs> I mean, I haven't had a breakout like this since I was in middle school. And they're like, well, you can't use anything because it goes in your bloodstream. And goes, I'm like, oh, wow. I thankfully found a facial scrub that's made of food. So I use that. Natalia and Maurizio do everything with passion and humor. And Vicky and Jose are wonderfully down to earth. I fell on my knees. It was bad. He was very skeptical because he's like, I don't want you taking any medication. You don't know the side effects. A lot of um, moms or parents come in and they're like, well, we're pregnant. What can I take? There are safe kinds of pain medications and different medications you can take during pregnancy. Now it's like constipation. These we call happy pills. In fact, on our old bottle, we scratched the label off and wrote happy pills on them because most people would agree that anything, if you wanted to do your research, that is category B or better is safe to take in pregnancy. But again, I'll always counsel my patients to ask first. If you're taking a medicine, it's because something's happening. And if something's happening, your doctor should know. When I met Phoebe, Jen, and Silas, their family is just so inviting, I wanted to move in with them. That's a really funny face. I tried to get pregnant for... It was about a year and a half, which we're still, I'm still kind of coping with. This wasn't exactly our, it wasn't plan, our plan, which you forget once you have yeah. all of the good stuff. Donnell impressed me with her command and presence. One will go here and shove two will go there. I didn't think I wanted kids for the longest time. Um, I was engaged to, you know, a pretty good guy. He, you know, talked about having kids and he wanted them and then he later changed his mind. And before he even moved out of the house, I had signed up with a sperm donor agency and done my first IUI. I've had three miscarriages, one ectopic pregnancy and one chemical pregnancy. Wow. So this is my sixth, yeah, this is my sixth pregnancy. I don't know which I, I'm looking forward to more, the baby or watching Sandy with the baby. <laughs> This is my mom's first grandchild, so she's super excited and I'm getting super spoiled. I was living in California with my fiance and then I kind of found out he was cheating on me while I was out here, so I'm staying out here. I was with him for five years and now it's like complete no communication, which kind of kills me, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work out for the better this way. And I felt Sandy was on two journeys, led by her heart. We started off where we thought we didn't want to have children. You know, we came from divorced families, so we we're like, well, you know, marriage meant, meant something different to us, and much less having children. And we're like, oh, well, well, we'll just be Oprah's dead men. Of course, you get older and you mature, and different things start to mean different things to you. And then when we started on this journey of, I think, I think we might want to have a baby. Even when we thought we were ready, 
and it happened, you're not sort of ready. Because you're never, I don't think you're ever really ready. Ready? Can you be? Can you even know what to be ready for? I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm tired all the time, but good. Always tired. I didn't want to do anything else but sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Are you going to take a nap today for mommy? Mm -hmm. You are. Okay, because you didn't yesterday. And mommy was tired wanting you to take a nap, right? Oh, it's tiring. My husband doesn't ever, ever complain, like, if the house is a mess or anything, but he knows, and I'm like, I am growing a human. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the first trimester, when you're feeling very fatigued, drinking lots of water can help with that. Being a resident, especially when I was still a junior, um, I didn't drink water. I just worked, 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 and <laughs> it was pregnant. And I was like, oh, that can't happen. So Sophia doesn't want to eat her meatloaf, so I told her baby sister already did, right? Because when mommy eats food, it goes to baby. When you're pregnant, there's a few key nutritional tips that I like to give. Avoiding things that are too empty in calories and making sure that when you do eat, you get a few different colors in your meal. You're balancing it with protein, fat, and carbohydrates in each meal. Some great foods to eat would be Greek yogurt, salmon, eggs, and spinach. Fish provides so many great nutrients, like essential omega-3 fatty acids. Any kinds of large fish, like shark, swordfish, mackerel, and tile fish, all of those fish are high in mercury, which can be a toxin to you and your baby. So you really want to avoid those kinds of fish. Fish that are high in essential fatty acids, specifically DHA, which is so important during pregnancy, are cold water fish fish like salmon, tuna, herring. Sardines is another great one. We all have days that we're not perfect, and taking your prenatal supplement is a really great insurance policy. Something to consider when choosing a prenatal vitamin is that every woman's body has different needs, and those needs can even change by trimester. So hydration, nutrient maximization, and the key nutrients during pregnancy are definitely all of the things that women should keep in the forefront of their minds while they're eating healthily during pregnancy. Your nurse will be with you every step of the way during your pregnancy. You'll see us at each of your prenatal visits. So bring any questions or concerns and ask us. We're here to help. I'm recording. Baby, you are 11 weeks today. Jessica tests her optimism by adding a baby to her duties as a working mother with three stepdaughters. I've heard horror stories about morning sickness. I feel blessed because I've just been nauseous. If I get too hungry, I'm really nauseous. And I gag. I just walk around and gag. It's so disgusting. Young couple Kelly and Jared <laughs> surprised themselves by getting pregnant soon after they were married. I, I would be making a piece of toast in the morning for her for breakfast. She would come in, run right to, to the, the garbage. garbage. Yeah, I couldn't even like, make it to the bathroom around the corner. It was like, it was coming out. Like, I go, I guess I can't even cook toast. <laughs> as much as Diana knows, because she's an OBGYN, she can't fix all the problems of pregnancy. For me, it was never really, it was not just morning sickness. It was all the time sickness. It's morning, afternoon, nighttime. I thought it was hilarious. I'd be like brushing my teeth for too long. And I'd be like, oh, no, that's not good. And Lucian's kind of like, <laughs> should I go in there? For the first few times, I was kind of like concerned and like maybe went to go and rub her back. <laughs> Eventually, I just went on eating my breakfast. <laughs> it's like, this is just life now, yeah. you know. I think one of the main things is really make sure that you don't get yourself too hungry. Because if you get to that point, there's no turning back. Yeah, I have to eat first thing in the morning. It's like I can't get to food fast enough. Having those snacks in my pockets has, has been a blessing. That's been my trick. I mean, even being an OBGYN, you, you can read the books and say, oh, this is what you're going to experience. This is what you're going to have. This is what you can take. This is what makes it better. But actually going through it, and now having that experience to share with my patients have been so much better. Well, if you're like worshiping the porcelain throne like I did, just hold on, it gets better. <laughs> it definitely does. Just your body is just not your own. You are hosting someone for nine months and things are gonna change um, and you just need to go with it. You just need to go with it. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point, very little can surprise us. Like, yeah. Alex can start throwing another arm, it'll just be like, okay, that's just pregnancy thing. You know? <laughs> Every like little milestone that you hit, like just, seeing your kid's anatomy, like just kidneys, like spines, which is the coolest thing in the whole entire world. I was like, just look at her spine. She has a spine. It just makes all of it just, who cares? Here's all these little things that might come up. It's, it's good. She has a spine and a brain. <laughs> That's happening right now inside of me. There's brain growing and part of the child inside of me. It's we're going to do front and side belly shots. So we're going to do front and side belly shots because we want to really track the progress of... I am recording. Uh, we want to really track the progress of of this belly and how's it going. So there, there's the belly from the front. Okay, so give me a profile. 
So there's the profile. No, have, no real bump. Have, nope, just a lot of chicken for dinner. Just ch chicken that I cook because I'm a good husband and I make food. Yeah, this was our, our first wine. Alex and Lucian have moved all the way from South Africa to further their degrees. It's kind of amazing to see it go from a little seahorse to a little baby with um, a big head. But I mean, you know, to be fair at this stage, all that it's been growing has been a head. So, <laughs> you know, it's probably going to fill out the other bits later on. I got to the appointment and, uh, and it, it was a big deal because not only did we get to hear the heartbeat that day, but they were doing major testing. This is this is the testing that you know checks for Down syndrome and this was the second bifida, appointment. Uh, yeah. The second appointment where they had the first ultrasound where they actually do it on the belly. The first one, yeah, obviously just through, yeah, like the the Ooh, basting wow. stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went in for the genetic um, counseling. They show you like the the breakdown of age and like everything kind of it like doubles at forty. Like all these problems that can occur. Asia and Michael are adding to their family at the scary age of 40, and I know what that feels like. There's a lot of good news on genetic testing. What we do for genetic testing really depends on someone's age. Less than 35, you're low risk. Above 35, you're high risk. What we do pretty much with everyone is we recommend this test called a nuchal translucency. We call it an NT. And basically what we're doing is measuring the back of the skin on the baby's neck. There's been an association with a thickened skin with two different things. Down syndrome and heart defects. So if we see those, we tell people, not that your baby has Down syndrome, but it looks like there may be an increased risk for it. So let's find out. And the new kid on the block, which is a fantastic test, is what's called cell-free DNA. We're basically a blood test. It actually picks up DNA from the baby or placenta in the mother's bloodstream. She did um, the harmony. The, Mike and I are both an agreement that we want to know oh, <laughs> as much as possible. Um, basically, so just so we can be more calm about it. When you do a lot of these screening tests, they are just that. They're screening tests. They're not diagnostic. For a woman who's had multiple miscarriages, who has had a, a poor obstetrical history, may need that information. So if you want a true diagnostic test, depending on when in the pregnancy you want the information, you can choose between doing a CVS if you need the information earlier, or an amniocentesis if you can hold off till till further along in pregnancy. So we're going for the CSV testing this morning. CVS. Yeah, the C CVS testing this morning. <laughs> what she said, chorionic villus something or other, and they're going to take a, a sample from where are they can take a sample from. Either from my stomach, through my stomach, or through my. The We're hoping through the stomach, right? That's the no. good. No. No, I don't want a giant needle going through my stomach. I thought that was the ideal. Okay, so we're hoping for the vahuhu. Yeah. Um, and so in a matter of days or maybe even today, we'll find out the sex of the baby plus any genetic things that there are to worry about. No matter which test you are getting around 12 weeks, you will also have an ultrasound where they check on the development of your baby. You know, you see it in movies, they squirt the, the gel on and they're like, Meh. So this time it was actually full head and arms. It was really just amazing though, seeing how completely active it is, but yet not being able to feel any of it. To see something that's actually happening inside of you, but having no physical connection like to feeling it is very unusual. You could see the nose and the chin and the hand. So what we know he had, he, I say he, I just do it. She like stretches, or he or she, I don't know what she is. I call her a she because you know, I'm goddess. To see the growth from week eight to week 12 was amazing. Amazing. You want to just keep seeing in there. It's pretty unbelievable. And what position were the baby's hands in? The baby's hands was there like this. Yeah. Our baby is a boxer in training already. It knows I to really, keep its hands up, which is great. If it's a girl, I really feel bad. It's going to be such a tomboy. Very exciting because now it's the open and can talk to people about it face. <laughs> I'm a little torn. I'm really excited, obviously, about this happening because we really didn't know if this was going to be possible. So the fact that it happened, I kind of want to like scream it to everybody. But then part of me is really scared because I'm afraid something could go wrong. Yeah, we were very secretive about it for the at least for the first few weeks. You know, we wanted to make sure the baby was healthy um, and, you know, keep it kind of a secret until because in my culture or the Hispanic culture, you're not really supposed to tell that you're pregnant until after the first trimester. We, we were really uh, conscious of, you know, friends of ours who are trying to get pregnant yeah. and who cannot. 
And, um, you know, we just, again, feel so blessed and so uh, lucky that it happened when it did. January 1st, we announced to Facebook and to our friends, in true Natalia and Mauricio form, and so it's us in our workout clothes. I did wind up having to tell my supervisor and my director because of the fact that I was throwing up under my desk and I had to leave. It's so, so comforting to know that um, there's just this level of expectation for this little person. And, and that we're not in this alone. I mean, that yeah, we kind of um, have a support base, an amazing one. Yeah. This is our baby, but it's also a bigger owl. I remember the relief my wife and I felt when we arrived at our second trimester. And even though there's a long way to go, I began to feel more optimistic. Can you throw? You want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Woo! Here comes the train! Here comes the train! Here it goes! Alex showing me how to burn milk. Pretty boring television. The milk isn't even boiling over. Whoa, Alex! Hi. <laughs> Hi. So you know what fruit the baby is this week? A plum or a pear. A plum. <laughs> Next week is a peach. The digestive system is beginning to practice contractions and the bone marrow is making white blood cells. Okay, I guess I should check and see if I'm like lined up here. Yes. I don't know exactly what to say, so I'm just going to start mumbling and I'm sure it'll, it'll take shape. Um, as of going through this whole entire process, isn't already emotional and nerve-wracking. Um, I have another spin on it because I found out that uh, my cancer, which was a sarcoma that I had a couple years ago, has now chosen to return now, at this point, um, which is really kind of one of my worst fears realized. <sighs> you know, I had just celebrated and told everybody at work the day before that I was pregnant like I had my 12 weeks and I brought the ultrasound pictures and then the very next day finding out that I have cancer it was like the world's cruelest joke the hardest part for me after I potentially you know partially I should say digested uh what was happening was having skull max and you know, calling his office and having him get on the phone and the only thing I could say was I'm sorry. And I just kept saying it over and over again that I was so sorry. I was so sorry that I was doing this again. I was so sorry that he had to go through this again. Try to remember to just focus on one thing. And my one step is I won't know anything else until Friday when I meet with the surgeon again after they've met and then I get the MRI and then we'll all talk and if this is what they think it is then I should be face down on the table hopefully within a week and I want to do everything in my power to keep it together and stay strong and stay positive and fight and never give up and just focus on this. I got a lot more reasons to fight now than I did before, and I did a pretty damn good job the first time, so I don't expect this will be any different. It's kind of like, you know, mama bear mode. You're messing with my cub, and I'm gonna take you out. So, that's the plan. Okay. Throughout the pregnancy so far, I had made some connections about how what you feel when you're pregnant is very similar to what I felt like when I was sick. Everybody just kept telling me it was because I was pregnant, so I just was kind of going with that. And then I found a lump in my back, which is where my tumor was before, and everything kind of just shifted into focus. And I said, well, no, I, I was right. That there was something that was wrong. Things that you can't control are going to happen all the time, but you can definitely control how you handle them. Hi, guys. Hey, buddy. You know, this happened. I couldn't prevent this, but I can definitely try to still make the best out of this and try to still focus on the positive that's here, which is that I'm pregnant and that's amazing and exciting and I'm 
creating a life which is a miracle in itself, but then it's a double miracle because I wasn't supposed to be able to do this at all. Do you like the pants? They might be. <laughs> yes, he does. He's like got a full mouthful of your pants. <laughs> you, you're the little pants eater. You can have deaths in your family. You can have placenta issues. You can have tons of things can happen to you. Mine just happens to be cancer. More? You can have a little more pants. <laughs> Lots more pants? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but we have to say what happened. Go ahead, tell. We got phone calls from the doctor, and he said he would do the surgery. And so the surgery is scheduled for September 9th, and they're going to take this thing out, and they'll keep me there for like two or three days, and then I can go home and just be a pregnant person. So I'm 15 weeks today. This is my belly. This is kind of the awkward stage. I didn't really like that period of Sophia because it was like, are you pregnant or are you just getting pudgy? Where's, the, where's mommy's baby? Can you show me? Yeah, right there. <laughs> I mean, I'm showing already. Can we get a look at the belly, please? <laughs> Hang on, let me zoom in. I think right around week 10 oh, yeah, is no, when yeah. we read where your baby doubles in size and she literally doubled in size. It's really poked out. So I actually love to see it rounding out. It actually yeah. makes me excited that, you know, things are going the way they should be going. Yeah. Second trimester, firmly. Um, I think this is the best time. Your belly's showing, but it's not too big. You know, everybody knows you're pregnant, so they're, you know, mostly being very nice to you, like giving the seat the subway, and you're glowing. This is the glowing time, I think. Second trimester rocks. I love it. I'm not a prisoner to my couch now. Definitely like have my energy back and I'm not nauseous. I feel better than when I'm not pregnant, which is crazy. It's night and day. I mean, she's just become so much more active. We're going out a lot more. We had really great <laughs> fun times. We, we even my school had like a pub crawl and she trooped through that <laughs> and kind of did a little bar hopping and kind of um, towards the end she got really hungry. And so as long as you feed her every now and then, we are in good, uh, good, good times. <laughs> so women ease into enjoyment, but there's no stopping the daily changes. Three weeks ago, I bought this tank top and it's already starting to rise up. Like I was cleaning the house earlier today and it was like up here. I was very against maternity clothes. And then we went to, to my sister's new apartment to visit her and I was wearing my regular skinny jeans. So I was able to button them standing up. But then I sat down in the car and I was like, I got in the car and I was like, ugh, ugh. My mom made me go to motherhood maternity. And I love it. I'm wearing these, uh, these leggings are like, the one with the band up here. <laughs> I like the full coverage. Wear my flap. Lucian thinks they are the funniest thing ever. If I could wear maternity clothes after, I would totally do it. But I don't know if that's acceptable. <laughs> so comfortable. Yeah. Still no visible signs of bumpage but I am wearing a maternity dress already just because it's so darn comfortable. <laughs> but, see, oh, like, dress. nothing really, not much, a little bit. Apparently I'm just a pregnant woman at this point. <laughs> I've had some surgery back there. I'm just hoping and praying that they're gonna give me the pathology and it's gonna be all great, she's gonna be wonderful, and then I can just be a pregnant woman. Just, just your normal pregnant woman. Um, I have my grossness here. This is what happens when you have to get a tumor removed. And they've already had a tumor. You have this. Lovely drainage tube, yeah. Yeah, but this is you know, this is why I can't go back to work, not because I don't feel <laughs> good, because I have this still stuck to me. Considering everything that I've been through, it was the only time in my life that I really felt like I, you know, dodged the bullet like the wind of my, you know, the wind of the bullet whizzing past my head was still moving my hair because it was that close. Like, you know, it was just it was it was yeah. painful to think of going not being here but then also just because I have so much that I want to be here for so I'm glad I'm still here you, you have to have those hard conversations when they come up you got to talk about the things that I think people sometimes want to keep to themselves you know we all have things that scare us or things that worry us. so this way you guys are on the same page you know what's going on with each other and there's constantly like an awareness of each other which I think is really important there's so much to think about, it can be overwhelming at times. The financial changes a baby brings, college fund, life insurance, wills. Uh, you have life insurance. I have life insurance, but it's not enough. Do you have life insurance out on me? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's hard because I don't like that kind of stuff. It's like weird and fucked up to decide a monetary value of, well, how would I be okay if, you know, 
Because I can't get past the emotion. I'm like, I don't need money because I will be gone. I already have life insurance. Um, <clears throat> I just need to put like the kids on it. Um, the one thing that I thought about that's kind of maybe morbid is like, do I need to make a will? Like, God forbid something happens to me, who would have custody of the kids? And that's the only thing that's kind of caught me, I guess, off guard a bit. It's a really, it's a, it's a very morbid thought, but it's, it's, it's true. It's, it's important. Key basics to keep in mind, a will and life insurance. So things are taken care of college saving for your children, general savings plan, your own retirement plan. They're all really, really important. And it's not going to happen unless you do it. It's about taking care of the now and planning for your future. I think just as just being a doctor, you think about that stuff a little bit. Um, I already, I have disability insurance already. So I've had, like I've had that for a while, but we're also getting life insurance. It's weird because obviously when you're single, you don't have kids, you don't think about it. But then when you're older, you're like, you know, I just want to make sure everything's okay because they're so cute, right? They're so cute. Hello, hello. Um, I am 16 weeks today. Week 17. I'm 17 weeks now, 17 weeks as of yesterday. Today I had the most amazing thing happen. Um, I was at work. I was on the subway. I was just having some quality time on the porcelain throne, if that helps someone else. And I go, oh, it almost felt like a little wave. I don't know, like a tickle on the inside? That flutting feeling. You know, flutter. Flutter. Those flutters they talk about. From right here, like, yeah, like some something going like, like that, really quick. I feel like, oh, I don't know, I think that's gas or something. I don't know what that was. Was that because I just ate that sandwich? Or before, I was like, oh my god, I feel her. And then I'm at the doctor, and the doctor's like, your uterus isn't up there yet. That wasn't her. Oh, OK. I can't really Those tell are just the butterflies different. in your stomach from being next to me when you wake up. Because you're so devastatingly handsome, and I can't believe I wake up to you every day. God, I just wanted to scream into the world, I felt my baby. It's instant, instant love. Just feeling that kind of movement kind of solidifies it <laughs> immediately. It's, it's the smallest, little, tiniest movement that you could ever imagine. It's, it stops my, me in my tracks, it like rocks my world. To see my wife transformed with joy at feeling our daughter move helped me to worry less. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And then I got him this little outfit here, which I'm so in love with. I'm already like now planning on, okay, where he's gonna be taking me out on dates when he's five, and I'm gonna show him how to be a gentleman. Going through what I went through, I feel like there's too many jerks in the world, and I don't want my son to be one of them. And it gives him that little gentleman theme that I'm going with. I'm honestly trying to raise the next president here. <laughs> so it's, what, 19 weeks, two days, and this is what my belly looks like. Pop today. And it could be the dress, I don't know. But, and I just ate. Today's awesome. Just got back from yoga, so feeling good, feeling nice and rested and stuff. I've had to adjust poses. Um, like, you can't do any poses on your belly. And also stop myself when I feel my heart racing too much. We, we've always been really active, so when we go to the gym and stuff, to see her like climbing uphill and having to go to the restroom, it's, it's cute, it's funny, and it's just, it's all sort of part of the experience. It is, it's, yeah, it doesn't bother me. I, I still do what I want to do, I just have to adjust it. Oh, Mom, we got a wobbler. We got a wobbler. Wobble, wobble. Look at that big belly. Mama's still working out. Get it, girl. Yeah. So how are you feeling today, Alex? Good, I just can't stop eating. <laughs> nice. Welcome to my world. <laughs> this is the first time that I, I actually have been getting hungry before Lucien, which means that I'm the one that's usually like, what do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? Yeah, 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 it's awesome for me. <laughs> so I have a new obsession or craving or yeah, craving. Ranch dressing on everything. I eat very healthy in the morning. I eat very healthy at night. My afternoons are filled with kind of crap. I'll have like that McDonald's, those fries. I love those fries. Usually like a fish boy, that's my big craving. Did I tell you guys about my like hunt for the right pickle? Pickle! I had a 
half tuna sandwich and a thing of spaghetti with a meatball. And I was just eating them once and they were just like, that's kind of weird. I think they meant gross, but to me, I was like, it tastes really good right now. Welcome to another episode of When Cravings Become Real. Here we have some Trader Joe's Chunkly Chocolate Chip Cookie Dough. And we've got some Betty Crocker's Whipped Vanilla Frosting. And when you put those two things together, you get this. It's all <laughs> came from the mind of Victoria. You enjoyed every bit of it. I did. I love them. They are delicious. <laughs> the best way to look at being pregnant and how much food you need, you need just a touch more. About 200 or 300 extra calories a day, which is not a lot. But I always say eat for 1.2, not for two. It's amazing how adaptable women's bodies are to making babies. And your baby's forming his or her bones and teeth. And if there's not enough left over for your bones, then you're the one that suffers. Especially for women who are going to be pregnant a few times, that can have an additive effect. So calcium is especially important to get enough of. So this is daddy. Recording mommy sleeping. She sounds pretty tired, don't she? Poor mommy, she's so tired. <laughs> She's gonna kill me for this. The hungry lion is up. I'm not hungry. She's on the prowl, waking up at office three in the morning to get some food for the baby. Wait, I wanted to say something. I forgot my pregnancy brain. I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? I got to work and I went to the bathroom and then when I was like washing my hands, I looked up and realized that my blush was like concentrated just in the corners because I had not blended my makeup in at all. Two giant circles like right here, like I was going to a kid's party. <laughs> it was the entertainment. I had an appointment, got in a car, was literally 10 minutes down the road and couldn't find my phone, so I thought I left it at the store that I had um, right across the street from my house. It wasn't at the store. Came home crying, and of course, with the tears comes hunger. So I open up the fridge to get something to eat, and my phone is just sitting on the top rack. Like, who does that? B. Oh my gosh, the food cooking. You ready? Yep, ready as I'll ever be. Okay. On our way. Eating some chocolate. Get the baby moving. On our way. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> Occupation. This way, right? Or stay home. So we will check the baby's position, fluid, and heart rate first. Look, do you see its little hand? <laughs> nice little hand. The 20 week or the complete or the big sonogram, that is a very, very important sonogram. Let's get this little bugger's heartbeat. That is looking for congenital malformations, oh, looking at the brain. Oh, is the heart oh, oh. functioning properly? People may choose to find out the sex of the baby or not. I was gonna throw a gender reveal party for my family, which now that you think about it, we should be the surprise <laughs> people. Yeah. So we're gonna actually have the doctor or the nurse write the gender on a piece of paper. So how are you gonna do the gender reveal? Is it today? No, no it okay. not in two weeks. Oh, okay. So we still have to leave here without going for two yeah. weeks. Don't give the envelope to her. So close your eyes. Are we ready? Yeah. It's a girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's a girl. So do you see those three lines? That is her labia, her girl parts. <laughs> oh, it looks my like God. it's a girl. Oh my, god. Oh, my god. oh my gosh. Crazy. Last time I cried because it was not a girl. Last time I cried because it is. Are you guys ready? Yep. It's a girl, isn't it? It's a boy! No! No! It is totally a boy! Look, there's a 
Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> See ya. I can hardly <laughs> stand it. I think I'm going to be sick. It's Marisa's mom all up until the party. It's a boy. It's a boy. And then I think like a couple of days before, I had a dream. It's a girl. My mom, she said, on the way here, I said, you know what? I bet it's a boy. She said, but then I looked at you and the baby spoke to me. It said, I'm a girl. And I said, oh my God. My coworker's husband was here with her. And I talked to him and he was like, oh yeah, you look just like my sister. He's like, that acne, he's like coming in and out. That's testosterone. She had a boy. She's small like you. So right before we went out, I'm preparing myself to see blue balloons. We go to pull the strings and then... We won the lottery. That was awesome. That was amazing. Oh, God. Mommy, mommy. <laughs> hey, Sai, what are you doing? So this is uh, week 20, which is kind of crazy because that means that I'm halfway there <laughs> and I'm kind of still trying to wrap my mind around that. That is my beautiful wife, walking towards an awesome Christmas tree. <laughs> Hi. I'm cold and I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, let's go. We are on week 20. Halfway to baby, halfway to seeing her. I'm not, totally not prepared for it in any way in terms of where I can like have her sleep and like all that stuff, but like, I just like want her here now. It's the snow apocalypse! My little nugget. You will one day appreciate how beautiful, I don't even know if you can even see anything, oh my gosh. I mean, it is like a winter wonderland outside. Mauricio is getting stir crazy, so I want you all to see his outfit that he will be running in the snow with. Now yeah, this is this is the face of a very successful man. <laughs> it never rains here in California. Yeah. <laughs> never playing in the rain. Playing in rain. Halfway point, I can't believe it. I'm, I feel it feels like it's going fast for me. So now I'm trying to do whatever I can to just make sure I stay present. The first five five weeks I didn't know. And then it was like, oh, I want her to grow so I can, you know, show something. And it was like, oh, well, I want to feel her kick, you know, so I can feel that I'm pregnant. And now I'm feeling her kick and I'm showing and it's the halfway point and I'm like, okay, now wait, slow down for a second. <laughs> What did you feel this morning, Lucian? A baby bump. Maddie gave okay, a little kick. And it was awesome. First I thought she was going to be a softball player, but maybe she wants to play soccer. So I'm like, uh, so uh, any movement today? She's like, yeah, you're it, right in my rib. And I was like, wow. And I'm like, I'm over here like... Wow. It's surrealistic. It's really. You can watch Ossie's stomach. It's not like that. It's, it's like like one of those alien type movies. It just moves, where, moves, and moves. There's and moves. something moving around like crazy. Oh, there you go. You're kicking. Oh. Dexter's moving like crazy. I feel him all the time. He just kicks and kicks, and especially when my bladder is full, it's like crazy. He just has like a battle with my bladder, and he's like, "Go pee right now. If you don't go pee now, you <laughs> you're gonna have a problem." <laughs> I was singing to her and my hand was right here and I was just singing and all of a sudden she pushed my hand up like this. And I was like, what the hell? So I, pu I pushed it back down and she disappeared. So I put my hand back and she pushed it again. It was just really, really cool. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> she's like tag with me right now. I feel them if I'm putting on my makeup and I lean forward and I squish them, then they kind of get mad and like kick me. But the weirdest thing about having twins is that you can feel like a kick in one place and a kick in another at the same time. And you kind of know who's doing it. You know, it's 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 weird. It's very it's weird. One time I felt I thought it was like her hand was down in my ovaries is what it felt like going down there and just twisting things. I'm like, you gotta <laughs> get back into this womb area. Down there is mommy's area. It's amazing. I'm like never ever on my own. I could you know, we've been 
it's it's kind of like having your best buddy with you all the time. <laughs> did you get to feel the baby kick for the first time? Yes. You did? I did. <laughs> you want to feel her? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. You feel her? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Show mommy where's baby. Where's baby? Where's baby? Silas down for a nap and he snuggled up to my belly and she started kicking him. It was really nice for him and for me to see him and how excited he was and I just can't imagine what it's going to feel like when I see him see her for the first time and when I see him love on her and her love him. Okay. All right. So here we are. <laughs> Let's see, here's our baby. Our baby. And the baby is something heroic. And you can feel it in your tummy all day. Yes, we can finally feel her moving in my tummy now. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I would stop feeling so sick and throwing up, don't you? Yes. I know. Maybe 10 days after ten we days found after. out, I found out, I just went crash. She got really sick. So she was basically <gasps> debilitated, couldn't care yeah. for her son for... Couldn't even care for myself. It's called hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperemesis, the true, the true entity, is, is a very disabling condition. This isn't just nausea and vomiting at certain points of the day. This is completely disabling. It's been feeling like crap. You can focus on nothing else. Attempting to cook dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up. She knows I can't make whatever she's trying to make, and she wants it to be good so she can actually eat it. These women oftentimes will get dehydrated, and then they just they they need to be taken care of to the point where they don't get so sick that their kidneys start to shut down on them. So there's weight loss to think about, there's hydration status to think about, uh, there's the growth of the fetus, obviously, and the overall well-being of the mother. <laughs> My body is like just taking it all so much out of me that I have nothing left. She's fine. It's hard to be that sick and feel like your baby is thriving. Can I shut up here, Mom? Yes. Huh? Filled up to the knees already here. I try not to get upset, but people don't get it. And they're like, well, you're pregnant. You should be happy. It's like I'm happy, but like I'm malnourished. I'm dehydrated. I'm beyond exhausted. I think it's easier this time because I have Silas, so I know what it's gonna be like, but with Silas, I cried all the time because I felt like, how awful could you not love? Like, part of why we tried to get me pregnant too, like we really did not wanna go through it again, and this time it was worse. So, it, 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 like we won't do it again. Yeah, I won't get pregnant again. our biggest kind of like clash is I'm like you don't know how it feels like to be so sick she's like you don't know how it feels like to watch the person you love be so sick so who's like who's got it worse who's like well you clearly have it worse because well not the, the feeling of vomit in your throat like I could never handle that I could never handle I'd rather throw vomiting. up than have you be sick I, I know I'd rather I know. be sick than have you be I sick know. so so it worked out this way but yeah, I, I do this part and you do that part. Yeah. Why don't you do the next part? <laughs> Birth. <laughs> oh, no thanks. <laughs> Look at that green one. Look at that humanoid. Uh, men, if your wife is pregnant, be ready to massage more frequently than you normally would. And don't wait until you're asked. Just do it sometimes. I just can't believe there's a that there's a human being human, inside of my stomach yeah, right now. Human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes me pretty proud that we've been able to get to this point and have a strong relationship and, and have a baby on the way, it's, you know, it, it's against not all odds, but a lot of odds. Yeah, like uh, a lot of odds to think that we like, we're forever going to be more connected because of the fact that we're 
you created a, a person. It's like the, there's never gonna be anything in my life that I'm gonna do that's gonna be more amazing than this. It's gonna be amazing, Mom. She just has this capacity to love and to care. She's taking really amazing care of me. Because <laughs> I can be a little child sometimes. Say hello, Alex. I think okay with being vulnerable and showing his emotion has been there from the get-go. I just knew that he would be an amazing father, an amazing partner. Alex just got puked on. Puked on. Oh, I do see it. Good job, Anushka. Seeing myself this way, I'm not used to it, you know, so like I'm happy when I see her and stuff and I see the round belly, it makes me be like, oh, cute, that's my baby. But it doesn't make me be like, oh, girl, you got it, mm. <laughs> you know, because I pride myself in my curves and stuff. Yeah, there's a curve there, but there's not a curve on the side. It's a new curve. <laughs> what new a curve. I'm very excited that he's not like turned off by my big belly. That makes me happy. <laughs> I think my sex drive was extremely high for a long time, and then um, unfortunately, it's definitely dropped. If anything, it's, it's definitely dropped. Way. We we just my body is not the same. There are definitely times where she's just um, not on board, and she just wants to be left alone. Mm. But then you know these two o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah. sessions, they kind of um, you know Sometimes. lead to a lot of connection, and we bond, yeah. and and that kind of makes things easier. It just doesn't feel like my bits down there. <laughs> It's somebody else's lady parts. But it's fine. It's not like bad or anything. But I thought that this was something that only I could feel. And he was like, oh no, I could totally tell. Um, I may notice some mild cramping after sex or orgasm that this is normal. Thank goodness. Because I have felt that. But it's good to know. I always tell my patients, as long as you're not high risk or anything, I mean, you can still engage in sex so you can be happy and. I mean, keeping your relationship healthy is very important as well. I mean, this is, you know, if you have a partner, this is your partner, and you want to make sure to keep that balance, you know? Mwah. 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 You done? <laughs> you want to be hug? Hug. Okay. I'm on no sex watch because uh, the doctor said that I have, you know, my fibroid issue, and I have marginal placenta previa. So since I have placenta previa, nothing can, as they say, go up there. Right now my placenta is covering my cervix just a little bit. So if it stays there uh, for the rest of my pregnancy, then I could not have a vaginal birth at all. When you get the news, it's very scary. I was extremely scared. Um, but they reassured me that she's fine. She's healthy. Um, selfishly, I was very scared because I want to have my, my vaginal birth. I don't want to have a cesarean at all whatsoever. You know, her telling me that she's seen other women that have very large fibroids like myself and be, they had a vaginal birth because the baby was able to push the fibroid out of the way. And then seeing as how I have marginal placenta previa, that, that just gives me hope. I have a lot of hope. So when there's hope, I feel good about it and I'm claiming that I will have that vaginal birth. It will be great. It will be awesome. Look at the flowers. Yesterday we went apple picking. I had fun with the family. But I guess seeing all those families kind of, it always gets to me. When I first came back home, I literally, the sight of a baby and a mom and dad, and I just started crying. I just, I don't know, I don't see how people come and know that they created something and walk away from it. It doesn't. Nugget, if you could see outside, it is a beautiful spring day. Usually between 24 and 28 weeks, women take a glucose tolerance test. You must drink that no more than 10 minutes time. That has to go down the hatch. There's no nursing it. So make it cold. Bottoms up. Chug, chug. Everyone says it's so gross. It tasted sort of like an orange soda, so it wasn't bad. <laughs> Gestational diabetes is one of the most common complications of pregnancy. Pregnancy hormones change the way our bodies use insulin and sugar, which can cause high blood glucose levels. If you develop gestational diabetes, your baby can be at risk for excessive weight gain. You may be also at a higher risk for needing a cesarean section. So it's important to get your blood glucose level checked. It's scary. It's really scary to learn that something like that can affect your baby 
you know, very late in the stage. Gestational diabetes is not the only thing to look out for. Blood pressure is also important to keep an eye on. At first, I thought I was going to have um, sugar. So when we went to take the glucose test, I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. It's going to be high. It's going to be high. She said it was normal. So I was like, oh, relieved. But then here goes the high blood pressure. Dr. Taj sent me to take um, the 24-hour urine clearance and the CDC. I don't even know these terminologies because she doesn't want me to develop. I, uh, I can't pronounce the word, but I think it's preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is another one of those very common conditions that we oftentimes will diagnose later in pregnancy. It's typically the onset of high blood pressure. The reason it's called preeclampsia, well, it's the pre to eclampsia, which is the onset of seizures. So this becomes an emergency and you never want to get to the point of eclampsia. You want to prevent it. I'm a big girl, but I've never had, like when I've done my physicals, I've never had bad cholesterol or high blood pressure or anything like that. I started peeing in the, in the damn jug. Ew, gross. There's urine in there. So now it's even scarier because I'm pregnant. So we just got to be more cautious now. Hi, Dad. Hi. Dad's cooking for me. Yeah. Salmon and onions. No more McDonald's fries. Baby carrots instead. <sighs> Daddy has to go pick up Mommy because she has an appointment today. At the doctor's office. Dr. Ma, who's the endocrinologist, has asked for another glucose test. So I'm like, damn if I do, damn if I don't. If it's not the sugar, it's the salt. If it's not the salt, it's the sugar. So the level went actually from 115 to 138, which is slightly high because 140, I think, is like when they actually diagnose you with the gestational diabetes. Um, so now I have to watch that. I have to watch my salt. So it's like, what more? is there like and I don't want to get emotional <laughs> but I don't I don't know what to do anymore <sighs> there was just so much that you need to take care of as basically an obese w woman when pregnant I used to think like when I was not pregnant like whatever I'll eat whatever I want do whatever I want but now since he's the priority I'm like, no, this has to, I have to eat my greens, I have to eat my fruits. This is such a life-changing event that you're now putting somebody that's not even here yet a priority <laughs> over yourself. But in the long run, it'll be also beneficial to me. Say hi, guys. <laughs> no. Say hi to the camera. Not to be bored. Hello, hello. I am 24 weeks today. Woohoo! This is the approximate age your baby can first survive outside the womb. Woohoo! We don't want her to, you know, to come out anytime soon. We're very happy that she has made it to this point, but we need her to keep cooking for as long. I'd rather her overcook. I told you that. I'd rather Little Nugget overcook. We're still struggling with her name, so she's still Nugget. Sorry. It's like you do what you need to do, you go, you feel comfortable in my body, you spend as much time as you want to in my body as long as you come out healthy and happy. I loved him since the first sonogram I saw him. When I saw that heartbeat, you know, that's, that's instant love. That's love that you can't describe. What I have with my mom, I'm gonna have that with another being soon. I hope to, I hope that she loves me as much as I love my mom. I love this kid so much and I haven't even met him. Like, I can't imagine loving him more, but they say when you see them, then it grows even more. But, yeah, I love this little kid. The babies. It did hit me. Her eggs are already in there and the number of eggs that she's gonna need for her entire life is already in her body. And that hit me and I was like, oh my God, one day I'm gonna be a grandmother. <laughs> and that hit me in the shower and I was like, let it go out. I can't think about that right now. I haven't even had her. <laughs> I felt my wife be profoundly in love with our daughter. I was at the point of just imagining what that could feel like. What I did know is that we needed to get ready. Third trimester. I'm 27 weeks. I'll be 28 tomorrow.
I mean, it, it's definitely real. It's, it's been real since uh, those six or seven pregnancy tests that she took initially. 27 weeks. So one week from that big 28 viability week. Mm -hmm. So very close, very excited. It's nice to know with modern medicine, your baby has a chance to survive outside your womb. However, the closer you deliver to 40 weeks, the less potential there is for complications. <laughs> Nature kicks into gear when it's supposed to. Sometimes it's before that time. Sometimes it's past that 40 weeks. And we need to let the mom tell us what's going on in her body and be the voice for that. While it may feel tempting to finish your pregnancy early, especially at the end, having a preterm birth is really challenging. I don't care how long she's in there, how much pain I'm in, because you want her to be the full term baby. I mean, it makes her perfect. Women's bodies are amazing. I'm constantly in awe of a woman's body and her ability to have a baby. The natural hormonal cascade of a woman's body and the interplay between her and her baby is just nothing but miraculous. How big is your baby? Do you like being a mom? I do. I love it. It's kind of what I feel like I was meant to do. Mm-hmm. My last day at work, my last day at school. Lucien last week in the MBA program, and this has been a journey for both of us. To be a stay at home dad for a while. It's been time with Alex all the times I couldn't spend with her. His mom will be in town. And excited? Yes. I haven't seen her in a year. Oh, I see her. Alex, Alex, I see her. I see her. Okay. We just felt like such a, a bigger family. Um, and they've brought so many well wishes from South Africa, yeah. which is great. Like we really felt all the concerns, all the thoughts, and yeah. how they're excited as well for this baby. Yeah. This was like the first time that I felt like this was our achievement, um, you know, together as a family. So now I feel like we kind of can start looking at what we need to be focusing on, our new home mm -hmm. and our new life with our baby. Yeah. <laughs> More fluent. IV number two of the day. I don't know, I just Yay. wish that this hyperemesis would kind of hit the road. I'm ready to enjoy my pregnancy and just enjoy life for the last 12 weeks <laughs> before we have another person and life changes again completely. Not that it won't be great and I won't enjoy it. I'm, I will be on belief, but I just want to be able to enjoy this life a little bit more before that one starts. So my blood pressure was good. Come on! Oh, we're, we're walking. We're walking. My blood pressure was good and my sugar was good. Right? Awesome. Yay! 29 weeks, 72 more days to go. Wow. Almost there. Blood pressure is good, 120 over 70, so it's going down, and um, no gestational diabetes. I'm happy. It's like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Today was really good, actually. I had broccoli, roasted chicken. What? Yeah, it was yeah. good. I think this experience, even if you do have bad days and good days, everything is a highlight. It's pregnancy. And you go through it, and you go through it your own way. <sighs> I just want to enjoy my pregnancy. Uh, you will. Be like those ladies that like, like la di da. There's nothing wrong. I'm there's, perfect. There's nothing ever wrong. There's always something wrong. I got fibroid, thyroid, hemorrhoid, gas. <laughs> Constipation. Constipation. What else I got? Heart Back burn. pain, heartburn. <laughs> Sore boobs. Oh gosh. Yes, all of it. Oh my gosh. Back acne. I got back scars. Shoulder acne and stuff. I want to be able to wear nice maxi dresses and stuff. You can. It's no big deal. I'm supposed to be pretty. You are pretty. You're my spotted cat. <laughs> no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> I love you.
love you. I love you. Men don't go through periods. Men don't go through pregnancy. They don't go through menopause. They don't go through half the shit that we <laughs> go through. Um, but at the same time, it's that's reserved for us. Actually, I feel like I'm spoiled because I just, you know, we don't have to go through half the, the, the things that, that the women have to go through. Um, like I said, I've been, it's been a great pregnancy for me. But <laughs> you know, we see this belly grow. Magically, a baby comes out and then we're fathers. But we don't have the sort of emotional bond that gets formed between a, a mother and a child in utero. We don't, we don't understand that. The sacrifice is made purely on the, just a physical level are, are mind-blowing. But then the emotional level of carrying a life inside of you for, for that long, then to have it just sort of ripped away from you, is, it's a powerful emotional thing, one that I don't think guys will ever fully understand. I believe in God and I think God created women strong enough to handle this. My wife's journey was amazing to me, but to be able to join all these women on their journeys brought into full clarity what a gift we truly received. <laughs> baby shower number three. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, that's the baby. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, we You can see we got a lot of stuff from the baby shower and then that following Thursday they actually surprised me at work with a, a work baby shower. We're so happy! It's so beautiful! I can't wait! We can't wait! We're really excited. We're ready. Y'all can guess when Jackson's birthday is gonna be. These people are guessing that he's gonna be way late. Shannon, you think Jackson's gonna come on August 30th? I will kill you if you're right. <laughs> Look at all the cute clothes. People are so ridiculously generous. You know, people talk about, oh, I'm gonna win a million dollars and roll on the bed and lay around naked in it. I was like, oh my God, I laid out the clothes on my baby clothes. I could totally like, get on the bed and roll around in it, but like, dude, let's pretend like I could actually like easily roll around anywhere. I can't, I absolutely cannot. If I was to lay down on these clothes, I would just be stuck. Okay, so I haven't been able to sleep well lately. So somebody told me to get um, a pregnancy pillow. That's it. It's unbelievable. Wait, hold on, I'll go in it. Yes, go in it, please. Oh, oh my God. Isn't it amazing? I'm pretty sure that Max approves of the pregnancy pillow. <laughs> the greatest thing ever. Okay, it's me again. Just took my shoe off. So, here's my foot. I don't know if you can appreciate the fatness on camera. And here's the foot with the sandal off. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look, see that area right there? Oh my God, I can't reach it. That area I'm trying to point towards on the left with the hump. Yeah, you used to be able to see a bone there. Look at that. Holy crap. The belly button is popped out and there's like a white thing under there because that's never seen the light of day ever. I got two stretch marks at the very end of my last pregnancy and I watched them like a hawk this time. I mean, I put coconut, every oil you can Sleep. think of a cream. It takes me 30 minutes to get ready for bed. And then I sit down in the bed, the dogs start licking me. I'm like, yes, I'm like a piece of chicken. Yeah. I'm like the first to be like, oh, God, you should be confident with your body. Like Those you are birthed your tiger a baby. Marks, Those are it? your tiger stripes. Yeah. But then like the reality of me getting them, I just don't want them. Stuff came out of my boobs. It's like, oh, hey, that happened. And I don't know if any other woman is going through this. Skin tags. I have no bladder control anymore. <laughs> it's just like, if I'm sneezing or coughing, it's just not going to end well. And of course she tells me about it. Yes. She'll be like, I just peed a little bit. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks. <laughs> Preparation age for my hemorrhoid. An internal hemorrhoid that did not feel good at all. Awesome being pregnant. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got it in you. <laughs> need some Vaseline. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Why do you have the parts so <laughs> Oh God. Yeah! Atta girl! <laughs> Can we
we get a woohoo, please? <laughs> Can I get a woohoo? <laughs> so you want to reenact your beach whale? So here we are. Hello, hello. Baby mooning. Last trip is in Tucson. By the time we're heading home from our trip, I'll be 32 weeks going into my eighth month. Crazy, huh? I'm in week 32. So eight months, officially eight months. Look at that belly. She's getting bigger. Bigger all the time. People always want to talk to it. I want to give it kisses, um, but I haven't had strangers, which I heard strangers. I'm, I may drop kick someone because that's, that's personal space. That might be weird. <laughs> There's only been one stranger that touched me and I was like, this is awkward. My friend was so put off by like going grocery shopping and having somebody be like, ooh, how far along are you? That she put her hand out and put her hand on the woman's stomach when she did it. She's like, this is awkward, isn't it? Like weird. I don't know you. <laughs> So this is our new place and it's special because this is Madeline's bedroom. Madeline! This is your new home. Soon you'll be in the room. I know that's the most comfortable place ever. My nesting phase has definitely taken over. Like it started taking over, be I think beginning of the second trimester. But now I'm like getting. You all set? No. <laughs> that scares me a little. Babies come with a lot of stuff. But all that's necessary, I guess. I think. It's one kid. Like, do they need all this stuff? Yeah, all these shoes. Like, kid on these shoes is not walking. It's not about the baby. <laughs> it's about the parents and their kind of display of love and kind of excitement for the baby. And so let go of the bottle? I can't, it's <laughs> full. By the time I was just pregnant with Silas, his nursery was almost done. This baby, we have a few hand me down clothes and it's all stuffed in the corner of our bedroom. They're so small. So I got the rock that my brother put it together and so I'm like, you know, let me do something for myself and we'll put together the diaper genie. I broke it. And then my hormones kicked in and I called Playtex like crying. <laughs> I felt bad for the rep. She didn't even know what to do. She was like, ma'am. <laughs> so then that stuff will be out at some point this week and then it'll be like more of a little corner for her. Lily Land. I know, Lily Land. Just the arm flailing. I just want to say. <laughs> excited about that. I am 32 weeks, a little over 32 weeks. 52 days. I've been counting now. <laughs> Once I hit 75, I've been counting down. Because I'm just so excited about it. I've been feeling okay, but I definitely feel like my body's sort of getting ready. And I think it's just really feels like the quiet before the storm, but in a really good way, <laughs> you know? I'm starting to get a little freaked out about the actual, like, Exit. Mass exodus. Entry into the world. Yeah, whatever. Entry, <laughs> sure. I told him, I was like, the day that I give birth, you better get me diamonds. More diamonds <laughs> than I already have because oh, labor man. is crazy. You know what? I don't think I've actually watched a movie of labor. I don't think I've You've never it. seen a baby crowning? I. <sighs> then we need to put you up on that. And then I made the mistake of watching a pregnancy video. I couldn't sleep. Like, I made my little sister watch it too, it's for birth control, like, just in case she were thinking about it. Even though I had a great birth experience the first time, I think just the actual physicalness of birth, it, it feels like um, a roller coaster. You know, you get on that the roller coaster and it's like you start hearing that click, click, click. And all of a sudden you realize, you know, like I didn't mean to be going on the fastest one there is, but oh, too late, you kind of got to go over the big hill to get to the end. I heard those clicks already and I'm like, oh shit. So Tuesday we went to um, a Meet the Doulas event and there was this one particular woman there. She said the magic words of, I bring no judgment. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to weed out fact from fiction and support you no matter what your plan is. So I'm excited to work with her. A doula is like having your own personal trainer. This is somebody that comes to your house 
when you're in labor, stays with you at home, tries to keep you away from the hospital, which is a good thing, until you're really in labor. And then when you are in labor, they stand by your side. Our current plan is to go natural. I did talk to my midwife. I'm going to, I may take hypnother hypnotherapy classes. Hypnotherapy classes, yeah. And actually this Saturday, we're going for our first birthing class at the hospital, which is exciting. And I kind of am taking it like, it's going to be what it's going to be, and it's just going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. You know, I could go through and figure out and say I want this done and this done and this done and then need, need a C-section. So I'm just going to kind yeah. of just let this ride. And I think uh, people need to be knowledgeable about what they do just because they hear, oh, home births or you know, birth center, it sounds really great. But if you have risk factors, uh, if you have diabetes, if you're you know history of pre or high blood pressure, the hypertension, anything like that, this might not be the best option for you because you don't want something to happen to you or the baby. It's your life. It's the baby's life. That's why there's nurses, there's doctors, there's, you know, in our case, there's midwives because, you know, it's part of the birthing process. The uh, resident nurse was awesome. She took care of us, like, the whole time that we were there, the majority of the time that we were there. We had a midwife, and she was amazing. Oh, Just my God. so loving and so, like, she grabbed me. I couldn't have birthed that baby without her, literally. Like, I... And I always feel bad saying it, but I've said it now enough times. But like I could have done it without anybody else who was in that room except her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, birth plan. Or... Well, C-section. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing I know I want to do is delayed cord cramp clamping. So that I want to do. They do offer um, breastfeeding classes, but um, I actually am having a nurse come the week of the baby being here, and she's going to teach me how to like do everything that way. I'm going to try to just exclusively breastfeed, which is what I did with Silas. I'm very conscious about using the language try to, though, because I have a lot of friends who ended up not being successful, and I just remember them feeling really sadly about the language that, that is used all the time. You know, I've researched um, placenta encapsulation, That's my new equipment way. that you can eat afterwards. <laughs> Now that's impressive. Other things to talk about is cord blood collection. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we actually are going to be going through CBR. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you, have you can possibly heal your baby in the future if something were to come up from all of the great things in their umbilical cord. Like, wow, that's really great. I have everything in my car. I can actually show you guys. See, that's our car seat right there. It's all ready to go. And then that's my CBR kit. As a patient, how could you even think not to do it? As a scientist, I kind of know the limitations around banking cord blood. My gut feeling is everyone should just donate it to a public database or registry. I would really love to have it rather than to not have it and wish that I had. I'm just trying to, you know, stay healthy in terms of the pregnancy, be ready for the birth. I didn't take any classes. I don't know if that was dumb or not, um, just because I knew it was a C-section. I'm confident that I'll, I'll be all right and I'll make it through without a class. We'll cool. see. <laughs> we'll see. So today I'm pretty emotionally drained because I got a lot of information today and not all Not all pleasant, happy information. This is the fibroid. That tiny hole, that opening right there, is what they think my cervix is. And the baby is here. So the baby would have to go through the cervix and go up, try to get around this fibroid. And like my opening is over here. So it's, it's blocking the exit for her to get out. Now I have to say goodbye to my midwives and start, get transferred to an OB that's gonna plan my cesarean. A cesarean that I never wanted in the first place. Literally the only way out is through that fibroid. But you know, the issue of trying to push past a fibroid in that position is just the amount of 
pressure that would be on that particular area would likely cause a rupture. And the last thing you want during a pregnancy is to hemorrhage. At the end of the day, I, you know, I want a healthy baby, I want a healthy wife, and uh, want to come home and start a new life together. Don't want to come home minus one or two. That is not in my plan. A C-section is a major operation. The risk when you have abdominal surgery, any surgery for that matter, is going to be the risk of adhesion formation. So you want to you know, minimize any potential complications by proper surgical technique first and foremost. After that, there are products and techniques that we can use, such as adhesion barriers that we can place while we're in the operating room to prevent adhesions in the future. She's out within the first five minutes. Yes. Then they go and do the suction thing with her, wrap her up, give her to you, and then you're holding her next to me while they sew me up for the next 40, 40 minutes of the procedure. Then, after I'm sewn up, we all go to a room where then I can breastfeed her. You're going to be there with her, holding her next to my head, but I can't touch her. She'll be right there, though. But You're still going to get to her within the hour, baby, and, and you'll still have that bonding time. That's important. While Victoria is preparing for her C-section, our other mom's bodies are preparing as well. It's mommy and daddy. Um, yesterday we had the doctor appointment. You wouldn't let the doctor get the heartbeat, but she said that was perfectly fine because you were moving so much. It was great to see. Um, they did check me, and I'm still fine. Um, I'm not dilating. Um, but she did confirm that I do have Braxton Hicks, basically, so I need to keep make sure that we keep track of my contractions and make sure that I don't get more than four in an hour or else we could be going into labor. Basically, like, your whole, all your muscles here just tighten up. You have absolutely no control of it. They just tighten up. And it's just like this super hard, tight ball. It was actually kind of scary because I wasn't sure what, what I was experiencing and it just felt really uncomfortable, but it would kind of go and, you know, subside. It's just disconcerting because you're waiting. You're just like, is there some pain that's going to come soon? I've been going through um, cramping and contractions for the past three weeks. I've been dilated for the past three weeks. My body's obviously apparently getting ready for it to come, for her to come. It's just like, when? Seriously, <laughs> I'm looking, look, very much looking forward to seeing Marie's face for the first time and also Kelly being able to like put on shoes again <laughs> and stop wearing my socks. <laughs> it was not a great week. Not a great week. No. Are we? Why? Well, I, I, yeah, I have no problem talking. It was not a great week because we had a little cancer scare again, a little lump in the back. Um, so Yay. it was biopsied yesterday and we'll have the results on Monday. So it was not an easy week to just focus on on the baby. No. Well, we, but we were always focusing well, on that's, the baby well, yeah. because of, you know, if she, can, if she has to come out, when she can come out. And right. wow, could it be possible that in the next like two to three weeks we would... Yeah, like that's that was that's something yeah. that we like sort of come to grips with, like that she might be here, like, like very soon. Yeah. Hello. Hey, How are you? Not bad <laughs> Don't cry. Because it's just not you. I, I know. I don't know why. The second you walk through the room, I'm like. <laughs> so let me take a look, and then yeah. I want to talk about everything yeah. going on. I've already. I got the news. Wednesday. He called me and the second I heard his voice, I just knew, you know, that it was back. <laughs> Finding myself now having a lot of emotions that I know don't make sense, like me being really hard on myself about this. I just want to keep you in here, like, for longer, and I can't. So maybe is doing great. Yeah, she's a rock star. Just totally. I feel very confident that she'll be okay, but I feel like I failed, which is hard. So at this point, she's 33 and a half weeks. She's you know getting close to to term, um, but we just want her to get the right treatment and get treatment as soon as possible. So we're going to plan on delivering her in about a week and a half from now. Those babies really do well. She's amazing. Her her grace through all this 
uh, not just the pregnancy, obviously, but the cancer stuff, and, and even before we got pregnant, back to the time when we thought we wouldn't be able to have a baby. Her, her grace through all this is it's remarkable and inspiring, and that's the stuff that good people are made out of, and good parents, too. Been a long time this I really enjoyed every single moment of this. You know, it was hard to deal with these, the cancer coming up twice during it. I still enjoyed this connection with her and watching my body change and learning all these things about her and just having this bond with her that, you know, Max doesn't get. And I kind of feel bad for him that he doesn't have that. Like, I would do this over and over and over again if I could. Going through this to bring you here is always going to be worth it. No question. I just want you to know how important you are. Like, you're bigger than me. And she's bigger than me. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. I feel pretty lucky. I feel pretty lucky all the time. I'm going to get to see Lily soon, and she's going to be gorgeous and tiny at first, but gorgeous. So, uh, if you can't tell by my lovely news, I am in the hospital at 34 weeks, not how I thought I'd be spending today, or yesterday, actually. In the last five weeks, Julian, my baby boy, has dropped from the 90th percentile, 90th growth percentile, uh, basically to the 20th. I went to my worst appointment ever on Friday. She told me then that they were putting me on a birth plan. Um, I'd be sent to the hospital that day um, to do steroids for two days, and uh, the babies would be born on Sunday. And um, that's pretty much what's happening. It's okay, I'm only here for a few more hours because um, as of, I think, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, my babies are coming. I'm swollen. Check my ankles. Let's see, me them big old dogs. Oh, yeah, that's Oh, nice. my God. The day before I had went to the doctor, and that's when she put me on bed rest because she thought I could possibly be leaking amniotic fluid. So I heard the pop. I was like, oh. You got to ask for a minute or two. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Hello, Nugget. It's me. I am your father. This is your father. <laughs> I guess you probably won't get that reference. Uh, I'm a little too young for that. I'm excited to meet you. We're getting down to the countdown now. So maybe this weekend... I don't know. Just take that butt, maybe pull that string in there. And you'll come out. See you soon. All right. So this is so cool. Just earlier, I thought the baby was coming. And now look at this. Look at beautiful mama. She's getting ready. She's having contractions. Somewhat we think they're contractions. I look forward to birth. Just calm down. And ecstasy. What do you want to say to baby girl? She might be coming soon. I put all the Come on, Nugget. Come on, Nugget. This is my baby. Quick and easy. <laughs> I don't know if I turn my birthing. You see that nugget? That's how you stay mentally focused. <laughs> Gotta go. So I came in for a regular follow-up today and they had, I'm actually sitting in labor and delivery right now because I was contracting. So guess who's home and still babyless? <laughs> that would be moi. One centimeter dilated. Um, so it could happen any day now. My contractions have gotten really bad. Oh, it's like there's a dumbbell hanging from, just hanging out my JJ. Oh, shit. Hi. Okay, dokie. Okay. You can see it. Yes, you can see it. Hey! Where'd I get it from? Oh, you want me? Oh, she breached too, by the way. Oh, she breached? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> I have some questions for you, and then you need to sign your consent form. Okay. Okay. Cold going in, okay? Any problems? Blee
It's also going to say possible myomectomy, which is removal of it if it's a fibroid, or possible excision of pelvic mass, or possible hysterectomy. No, that's not what we discussed. So his concern is that once he gets in, if there's something that, for whatever reason, with the mass that's unusual or complicated. Okay, and I respect that that's what I want, but I do not want to sign anything that gives you guys okay to take out my uterus and give me a hysterectomy. Okay, fine. So we'll just redo the consent forms that just say cesarean section. Yes. Okay. A part of me wants to be completely asleep so that I can just like go to sleep now and wake up and have my baby. But then the other part of me is like I want to see her and I want to hold her and I want that experience and I don't want to miss out on her birth. Which, you say birth, but this cesarean doesn't feel like birth. It feels like operation. Talk where you today. They're in your hands. We ask you to cover them with the blood of Jesus. In, name. in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you, Mommy. Love you. Hi, um, I'm a patient and I'm 39 weeks pregnant. Um, I called in this morning because I was um, having some bright red spotting and then I started having more consistent contractions. Um, my contractions have subsided but the, um, the spotting, I'm still spotting and it hasn't sort of changed. It's still bright red so the color hasn't changed and I was just a little concerned. What did you say? You say come in at 2 o'clock. Today? Mm -hmm. I lost my mucus plug on Wednesday. I started spotting yesterday. Today we were contractions, but they aren't consistent because we came in to get monitored. The heart rate it was depreciating too for too long of a time, and just didn't want to take that risk at that stage. They decided that I needed to have a C-section. Two and a half days from my due date and still no baby. I thought I was having contractions this morning, but they went away. So I guess it was just gas or back pain or whatever. You're filming? I thought you were taking a picture. I'm gonna film right now. So why did you decide to bring the whole I didn't case know. of chocolate? You decided, stadium. you just told me to hold it. No, you said you can give some to the nurses. <laughs> See, very plausible. Hello. <laughs> Almost 40 weeks and my water just broke, I'm pretty sure. It's your birthday. I think, we think. It's her birthday. What did they say about the color of the water? They said it was, as long as it's not green, because it wasn't clear, it was kind of tinted. Yellowish. I thought brownish, so I got, I'm a little paranoid right now, though. Say goodbye to this baby bump. I said, I think there's meconium. There is. She said it's pretty common though, but still. Oh. She'll be fine though, right? She will be fine. I chickened up from having been induced yesterday. Because there's like the fear, the physical fear, but also the mental letting go, like, I'm never alone. And that's it. That's part of the reason that it's sad. Like, and it was the same way with Ariston that I was sad a little bit when I gave birth because I realized, like, that's the first step they're going away from you. <laughs> but it's really... It's, it's simultaneously so exciting and such a big, like, letting go. <laughs> I observed women change fundamentally and change in a way that it could happen without even being noticed. I feel I can say that the survival of all of us is based on the grace with which women embrace this transformation. Thank you. Live from the labor room, it's Kelly going through labor. <laughs> you are so cute. I hope it happens somewhat fast. And I can't wait to get the epidural, basically. At one point I was like, she's just gonna dissolve into my body like she's never she's never gonna come out i did the primrose oil i had mike had to have sex with me <laughs> oh and i ran up and down my stairs like 10 times and then walked rigorously up and down the block and so i went to bed and at like 2 30 i felt 
like a little crampy. I was having really bad contractions already in the car. I went in and I'm like, I want an epidural. They're like, your, your name please? You know, like, can we get your insurance card? Like, what's going on? Say hi, mommy. Hi, am I? I don't feel that. Okay. No, it's just looking at her going through pain. That's what, that's what gets me. I can't wait to meet him. This stubborn baby that took like an extra week to get here. But I can't wait. Can't wait to see him. Can't wait to hold him. Can't wait to hear him cry. I can't believe tomorrow I'm going to be a mommy. And how do you feel about it? Do you think tonight's the night? No. You know we're near close. Why do you say that? Because you're videotaping me right now. <laughs> <laughs> when it's happening, you won't be able to hold this in your hand. You know, miracles do happen. Mm, they happen with pain. <laughs> <laughs> 8.30 in the morning, 8.35 in the morning. Epidural, IV, and uh, mm. Pitocin. Oh yeah, Pitocin's over there too. Oh. You are adorable, my love. So what's, what stage are we in, honey? The after phase. <laughs> I know I just finished peeking for me. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's not feeling too comfortable. I'm really feeling an urge to push. This is not a joke. Isn't it weird that we can have a baby afterwards? <laughs> they get the epidural in. I can't feel any contractions. We're just laughing. I had my GoPro camera on. And then she's like, oh, you're fully dilated. She's coming out. You can push. <laughs> oh, my God. Take your baby. She's still part of me because she was still inside, and yet she's her own person. And I pull her out, and she's on me, and and that's it. Like now, like it's my daughter. I know, we're so lucky. It's just incredible. It's like the most incredible thing. Like this thing you've been growing that's been sweetly keeping you company for all this time, and like to finally see what what she is. Push again and push. 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 Push up, push up, push up, push up, push up. Go. Go. Give me another breath. And go. Push. Good. You can do it. Oh, oh my God. That he, he just can't reach. It's just undescribable. Like, I mean, I, I want to be around her all the time. I can't wait to come home and see her. All the craziness that, you know, you try to figure out, you just look at her and it's all, it's all good. It's all good. His eyes are wide open. Cause you guys get right next to us. Oh. This is my big debut. <laughs> I don't know, but one word can describe the type of joy. It's, it's like a peace and a calm, and I can't take my eyes off her. Like I just have tunnel vision on her. Like, she's 
So we are getting ready to take Lily home shortly. <laughs> this beautiful little nugget. This perfect. This perfect little creature who we made. The moment of looking at your child for the first time, it's incomparable. It's totally incomparable. And there's my beautiful wife, who I love more than anything in the world other than that little thing. You could tell me a million times that I'll be hopelessly in love. You can't actually explain to somebody who hasn't done it in words what it will feel like. Two loves of my life home together. This is just who she is all the time. Mm -hmm. It's very calm. Mm -hmm. Perfect little baby. Oh, five pounds of you. <laughs> just under. <laughs> I've had so many losses. You know, I worried my whole pregnancy. I'm just so happy they can do things now. You know, if they didn't have that, God forbid, you might not have made it. Worst case scenario, or you know, he might have had developmental issues or something. You know, could have happened, and we wouldn't have had you know such a happy ending. There we go. 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 Having two is fun. <laughs> You're always holding somebody. What do you look like? Still trying to figure that out. The pain and suffering that I went through, he will hear about it. A C-section was not something that I would never joke about anymore or say that it's the easy way out. Because I've heard so many people say, oh, C-section is the easy way out. No, absolutely not. Sleepy yeah, he's real sleepy. I fed him right when he was born, so like around nine. He got an eleven, then a two, and then at five, six. Six. It's your little brother, Ethan. Mm -hmm. Say. He's like, you want to hold, you want to hold baby? Oh, 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 he's pooping. Wow. Yeah, definitely my son. Swim, bow, snow, drain. Oh, I don't know. Those things don't look cool with your sister. Because these are all kind of... Just to look at the complexity of her face, her detail, to think that that actually took form, you know, in my body. You still don't even envision that level of detail. It felt good to have her. Um, just felt like it kind of should be the way it would always should have been, basically. She's perfect, she's perfect. Hi. Hi. Oh my God, you did. You did it. You did it. Oh. Right above here. Yeah. Well, I, first of all, feel like a million bucks. I'm right back to myself. And it feels already like forever we've had it. Honestly, I think the birth made me feel so much more confident. I just feel glorious and I feel powerful and strong. It's just so magic. <laughs> Yeah, those are our kids. You're as perfect as perfect can be, it's true. You're as perfect as perfect can be, whatever you may do. You're as perfect to me, too. Kiss the sky.
sky and hug the trees as I go by. I sing a tune to strangers as they look at me and wonder why. These are all the things I do since the moment I met you. Since you made my dreams come true. These are all the things I. These are all the things I